Smoky one today, folks. My first glass of scotch was a Lagavulin neat, said National Treasure Nick Offerman in an interview with Forbes, recalling a pour he had in his late 20s after years of beer and Irish whiskey. And I say, holy cow, I see what all the fuss is about. If this is scotch, and I was so kind of ruined by Lagavulin from then on, any scotch that was merely golden or fruity or had, you know, notes of honey, I was like, what is this boring lemonade? I need a campfire in my glass. Those are the immortal words of Nick Offerman. Lagavulin has released its third collaboration in the Lagavulin Offerman Edition series, an 11 year charred oak cask. It's Smoky Wednesday, it's the Mash and Drum. What's up, folks? I'm Jason C. from The Mass Syndrome. Welcome back to the show. Like, subscribe, do all the things you need to do. Uh, say hi to the Grinch over here. What's going on, man? You feeling better today? God, those yellow eyes just pierce right through me. All right, before we dive into this tram, let's hear about today's sponsor, a great gift for the whiskey drinker in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Z-Biotics. Check it out. Today's sponsor is back. It is Z-Biotics, just in time for the holiday season. With all the great feedback, I wanna make sure all of you get a chance to get these for a great deal before the holidays. Z-Biotics is a product I've been using behind the scenes for my live streams, barrel picks, and other times that I know I'll be having a good amount of whiskey. But also, it's just for folks who wanna go out, enjoy some drinks, and still be pretty productive the next day. Z-Biotics is a probiotic drink that breaks down the byproduct of alcohol, which is most responsible for rough mornings after drinking. Now, when you drink, a toxic byproduct of alcohol builds up in your belly. It's that byproduct, not dehydration, that causes you to be not at your best the day after drinking. Z-Biotics produces an enzyme like the one your liver uses to break down this byproduct. All you do is drink one of these about an hour before you start drinking, and that's it. You should still drink water, stay hydrated, and get a good night's sleep, but Z-Biotics makes it that much easier to be productive the very next day. Z-Biotics is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It's real science that works. I love it because there's no random plant extracts, there's no off-the-shelf ingredients, and the number one reason why I love it, 100% money back guaranteed. Get Z-Biotics for 15% off by clicking the link below in the description. This is the six pack. They also have a three pack and a 12 pack. The holidays are upon us, everybody, and Z-Biotics not only is great for the holiday parties you all go to, but it makes a great gift. It's unique, it's thoughtful, it's under 40 bucks. So click the link in the description box and use code Mash and Drum at checkout, or go to zbiotics.com slash Mash and Drum and get 15% off your first order. Thanks to Z-Biotics for sponsoring the video and to all of you for making the sponsors happen. So Nick Offerman began working with Lagavulin, which is a 206-year-old Isla whiskey distillery in 2014, having promoted it fictionally on parks and recreation for years. Coincidentally, the favorite scotch of park and rec creator Mike Shore is also Lagavulin. I'm gonna give this a pour, let it open up a bit. After that, an introduction at the distillery became the start of a nearly decade-long partnership that led to a few dozen hilarious My Tales of Whiskey videos. You guys definitely have to check them out on the Lagavulin channel on YouTube if you haven't looked at them yet, including my favorite, probably everyone's favorite, Nick Offerman sitting by a U-log, sipping Lagavulin and literally saying nothing for 10 hours. That partnership inevitably led to the Offerman Editions. Now, the first expression released in 2019 was an 11-year-old whiskey that was heavy on the peat flavor because it's five years younger than Lagavulin's 16-year-old flagship whiskey. Two years later, the second Offerman Edition was also an 11-year-old, but finished in Guinness casks, and that was probably one of my favorite scotches last year. Now, the third Offerman Edition uses American red wine and European oak casks that have been shaved down before being heavily recharred. Now, the whiskey was fully matured for at least 11 years in these barrels, it's, so it's not a cask finish, it's a full maturation. The result is the smokiest Offerman Edition to date, bottled at 46% ABV and priced at 90 bucks. Let's try Offerman's latest creation. Now, if you read the press release, Nick Offerman does recommend pairing this whiskey with a medium rare steak. I mean, that's pretty Ron Swanson of him, don't you think? <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, the nose on this is wonderful. If you're a peat head, you like peated whiskey, and I think it's the red wine. That red wine fruit flavor, the dark fruit that comes through here, is super rich, and it's super prevalent on the nose. 
you definitely get a sweetness to it. I think that brininess that you usually get with Lagavulin is there, a little bit like a salt characteristic. Heavy vanilla here, but this nice little hint of dark fruit on the back end of it. Man, I would go as maybe dark as a raspberry here a little bit, raspberry, strawberry. Oh man, that is nice. And this is only probably gonna get, you know, more fruit forward as it opens up. I'm definitely past the shoulder here on this bottle. So it's been opening up for the last like week or so before I could do the review. All right, let's try it. Here we go. Cheers. Damn, that is smoky. Holy hell. We talk about a smoky whiskey. This brings the peat, it brings the smoke, and just a touch of that, that red berry, but I don't really taste it right now. That first sip is super smoky. That's what normally happens with a peated scotch. You get a lot of smoke up front. Now the next sip, that's when you start getting the influence from the red wine cask. A little bit more red berries come in. It's a little bit sweeter, more of the vanilla comes through once your palate is used to all that smoke. But man, and also I would expect this to be a little bit more drying on the palate than it is. It's really not drying me out as much, like thinking how smoky it is. I don't know about you guys, you can let me know in the comments. Generally, celebrity whiskeys or celebrity backed whiskeys don't usually live up to the hype. Most of them, maybe like 90% of them. But I think Nick Offerman in some crazy way has cracked the code. Um, I. I've enjoyed every expression, all three so far that he's come out with. Uh, last year's was the Guinness, uh, the Guinness finish, the year before that. You know, just a really nice age statement being 11 years old, a little bit less than the 16 years, so you get a little bit more of that peat punch. Oh man, this is getting sweeter and sweeter the more you sip it. And I think that's like the natural evolution of sitting down with a peated whiskey, a heavily peated whiskey. It's That first sip is, is what normally throws people off. You know, you kind of get all those you know, those flavors, the huge bout of smoke, and it comes off medicinal and iodine -y almost. But you spend enough time with it, it starts opening up a little bit. It starts, your palate gets used to the smoke, and then all these other little flavors start to, you know, unravel. You know, it's like an onion. It's got many layers, like the Grinch here, right? You're, you're an onion? No? Am I mixing you up with someone? I absolutely love this. The more sips I take, the more the wine cask is coming out. A little bit of the dried fruit, cherry, raspberry. I mean, it's subtle because it's so smoke forward, but man, the more you sip it, it's just, just ever gets so close to the uh, to the end of this one. It's, it's nice, and for 90 bucks, I mean, it's unique enough that I think I would spend the money on it, maybe buy another one. I think this is one you should buy and then even can bunker another one because I think, you know, these Offermans do tend to sell out at a certain point. But man, these just dropped here in Ohio and glad I grabbed one and they are so damn good. Last sip. The one thing I'll say is it lacks a little bit of a finish. It gets real easy to sip as you keep sipping it. But overall, it's a really enjoyable peated whiskey. I mean, I would argue that the Offerman editions have been more interesting than the Ardbeg committee releases the last few that have come out. I think for the money, you're getting an interesting enough whiskey that's either just as good or, or as better as some of those. Yeah, it's not a cast strength, but I think the flavors are there, the complexity and the uniqueness that you want has been coming through way more in these than the Ardbeg committee releases as of late, I think. So yeah, cheers to, uh, cheers to Lagavulin Nick Offerman for this release. Nailed it. Love this one. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this review for the new Nick Offerman Charred Oak Cask Lagavulin 11 year. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Uh, if you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Let me know down in the comments if any of you have tried this one already. Do you agree with me saying that this is a better value than a lot of those Ardbeg committee releases? Always uh, love hearing from you scotch heads as well as the bourbon heads. So uh, as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. Cheers, see you next time right here on The Mash and Drum. Take care, folks.